Welcome back to What Are You Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the SU-8, it's the Tier 6 Soviet SPG, and we're located on the north spawn of Fisherman's Bay. And the name of the commander, and I might get this wrong, is Sightlegs. Uh, or Sightlegs. Anyway, it's, it's, um, it's something like that. <laughs> I do apologise if I've got it wrong. And you can see that he's got two mark stars, two marks of excellence on his barrel. So he's obviously a very practiced player in this RT. Now, what else can I tell you about the SU-8? Well, it was apparently a uh, paper uh, project. So they never actually built any uh, prototypes. Um, but they were going to use the chassis for the T-28. And uh, they're going to mount this howitzer on it, the 152mm howitzer. Uh, so it does look very similar to the T28, but they changed a lot of the running gear, stripped out uh, the turret and a lot of the gear inside. Um, and what else? Well, the rails at the side actually were supposed to fold down so that the gun could actually uh, shoot in 360 degree direction. But uh, in the game, they don't actually have that. They uh, they have the um, the gun fixed, uh, only firing within a narrow arc to the front, uh, which is a bit of a pity actually, because that's uh, one historical inaccuracy. Maybe they are correct. He's firing at that corner because there was an enemy there. Unfortunately, the enemy went unsighted, so we don't know if we've done any damage. He's found a T1 heavy to the south. Okay, he's dialing in on that. He's reloading. He's got 17.3 second reload. Not quite as good as the M44 with its 16 second reload, but it's still pretty good considering this is a 152 millimeter shell and he's got uh, 26 of them. Fires the round in. He's a blind shot. I think the Cromwell B probably had pulled back, but we'll see if it did any damage. Type 62, which is a uh, light scout. It's a tier 7 scout. He's pulling up again to do a spot. There's the Cromwell. Okay, he has lost a lot of hit points, but I think it may be to his colleagues. And that shot went long. It went very long. It's some very bad RNG on some of these shots. And those two tanks, are, they're not cuddling. They're just seeking protection from that building. And unfortunately, it hasn't worked out well for the Cromwell B because he's been taken out of the game. But the Type 62 is still there. There's also a Type 64 over the other side. That's the Chinese light tank. But he's hiding behind those buildings, but it's not going to hide him from Splash. Rounds out. Oh no, that one went long again. And so he totally missed the target. So he's getting some very, very bad results on RNG. I mean, he fully dialed in, but it's just not hitting the target at all. Aiming for that Type 64, he's placed it on the corner. No, it hits the building instead. The Type 64 is pulled out. Uh, he can hit that P43. Or at least he could have, but it's pulled back again. Going to go for the other corner. Can splash it. Rounds out. And it goes long again. He's getting some terrible luck with these shots. None of them seem to be going where he wants them to go. He's still got 20 rounds left, so there's plenty of ammo. Loaded. Rounds out. That might have damaged the Type 64. Can't be certain. T6, the Type 62 is still in that position on the other corner. But he's aiming for this Crusader, because that Crusader can be seen. And he's hiding. Round out. Straight away, he's pulling back. Oh! And at the time we needed a shot to go long, it didn't. It fell exactly where it's supposed to. I think he did splash the Crusader though. There's the Type 62. He's in the open. But we're not dialed in, so it could go very wild. He fires around anyway. Oh, he hit the Type 62. 304 hit points. Two critical hits. Right, there's the Crusader. Hiding behind that house. Waiting for the reload to go in. He's dialing in all the time. He's almost there. Round out. Straight away. And... Yes, he got him. 108 hit points. 
Now you can see he's using part of the water. There's an S-51 there nearby. He's also using the water for cover. A Type T-34 is coming up on the north end of the map. Dialed in, round out, and he gets the Type T-34. 54 hit points, second kill. There is a Hellcat there as well. There's the Type 64 in the center. Keeps going in and out of those buildings. It's going to be very difficult to hit. There he is. Okay, round out again. And he gets a piece of him this time. 151 hit points. And he gets some stun assist afterwards. And again. That Type 64 is a one shot now for anyone. Ready, round out. And he got him! He got him! That was enough. It was a splash. It must have landed somewhere near. But he got him. So there's now that Hellcat. He's got three kills. Um, there's a Hellcat left. In fact, there's six enemies still remaining. He's got one shot up. He's firing where the Hellcat was last seen. But he's now reloading and pulling back into the bushes. There's a tree there, so he doesn't want to knock that down, but he has, because uh, that would give away his position. There's three enemy RT, and they must be looking for sign of where uh, the their counterparts are. I'd be surprised if an enemy RT shell does not come in. It obviously means they're not paying attention. Uh, we just lost a gorilla on our team. He was in the bushes uh, south of the camp. It's a bit of an open position for a gorilla. Fires come around in at where the uh, Hellcat was last seen, but it has no effect. There's the AT-2. Okay, well he can hit that, for sure. Being spotted, and the enemy Hummel's been seen. He's further south, but he's start, still dialing in on the AT-2. And there's the Hellcat! Oh my god, he's now caught between the rock and the hard place. He's got three enemies he needs to kill straight away. And he fires at the Hellcat and he misses. Oh my god, what a time to miss. That Hellcat's so close. Now the Hellcat didn't see him, but he is still there. And it's more than likely he's going to pop up on that rise. So he's dialing in on the rise and... Grabs out and he gets him. 256 hit points, kills the Hellcat, that's his fourth kill, oh my god, here's the enemy M12, and he's coming up to try and kill them all, what's he going to do, he's loaded, and he shotguns him right in the face, 127 hit points, he's going to have to move now though, because the enemy RT, the Hummel at the other end, well, he's, he's out the game, but there is still an MX-13 AM in the game, I'll be shocked if that AMX does not fire in. It doesn't look as if he is. Maybe he's not paying attention. There's the AT-2. Oh, and he can't hit him. Oh, and they lose the T-34. But they know where the AT-2 is for the meanwhile. Dialing in on the AT-2. If he carries on the straight line, that round should go near him. No, no joy. Okay, so it's two RT versus three enemies. Two RT versus three enemies. And two of those are tank destroyers. One's an enemy RT. Now the tank destroyers. It's a Panzer Sebstvar Folieta. The Death Toaster. And an AT-2. So, looks to me like uh, they're going to set up an ambush. Siplex is going to actually sit behind the cap in the bush and wait for the one of them to come towards the cap and then wipe them out. The S-51 is staying in his current position and he's going to try and help. So anything that uh, Siplex spots or Siplex spots, uh, then the S-51 will do his best to try and kill them. There's the Panzer Sebs Farfleta. He's actually behind the S-51. He managed to come up the uh, west side of the battlefield Dialing in, fires around in. Oh, I don't know if he got a hit there, and I'm not sure if he would have been seen. I don't think he would have been. 
I, I'm pretty sure that the Death Toaster is the other side. And here comes the AMX 13 at 1, 8, 13 a.m. The tier 5 uh, French SPG. He's styling in manually. And he wipes him out. That's his top gun. But the Panzer Sebsvaletta Death Toaster probably did see that. But the S51's doing his best to fend him off. He's loaded. <coughs> no, not just, not yet, sorry. Now he's loaded. And he gets a big hit on the uh, Death Toaster. He stunned him. The Death Toaster's on his way to try and kill the S51. The AT2 must be taking an awful long time to try and get up here. Uh, it looks like it's going to have to be... Uh, oh, the S51's going to have to do it himself. Oh, he's not going to... No, the Death Toaster's going to get him. Yeah, he has. Now, where's the Death Toaster going to go? I think he's going to try and get unsighted and then come up behind one of the bushes. Oh, he did him! He shot him from behind! Beautifully lined up. He shot him from behind. And now we're in the position whereby Simplex can either ambush the 82, who's actually... If you remember correctly, the 82 is actually near 100% health, or he can take this matter into his own hands, rush to the other end, cap, and cap out on the 82 before the 82 can make his way back up here. That's what I would do. I go to the other end of the map and cap out. The, the 82 is bound to have actually tried to come up here, and it's going to take him forever because it's a very, very slow tank destroyer. Oh, it doesn't look as if he's going to go do that. It very much looks now as if what he's going to try and do is uh, ambush the AT-2. There's the AT-2. Okay, so he couldn't have gone back if he had tried to get to the other end. He wouldn't have made it, made it to there in time, but he's going to hit the AT2. Dialing in and that out. And he's hit the AT2. 11 capture points. And the AT2 never saw that. He would have known the direction from which the shot came, but he didn't see the SU8 because he was far enough back behind the bushes. And here comes the AT2. No, he's going in the opposite direction. He's running away. Why is he doing that? He's going to line him up for another shot and round out. Now, there's no, he didn't get any hit points off that. Right, now, there's not enough time for him to dash to the other end to start capping at that end. The AT2 is sticking near the cap, but he's going the other side. Now, I think this is uh, one of those positions where he's going to play for a draw a stalemate either that or he wants the SU-8 to try and hunt him and therefore he'll be able to take the SU-8 out well let's see because the SU-8's uh, the SU only got one round of ammo left he's got to kill him with the next round and there's the two minute warning, which means that he's only got two minutes and there won't be enough time in, in 25 seconds. There won't be enough time for him to cap out. And certainly 25 seconds is not enough to get to the other end to cap out. And it won't be enough time for the AT2 to cap out either. If he doesn't get into the cap in about four seconds, three, two, one. OK, now I don't think he can cap now. So he's playing for a draw. I do wonder if the 82 went to the northwest because uh, he may not have had the direction indicator switched on. And he thought that the enemy RT was actually in the northwest corner of the map. So 
he's trying to get behind the bushes so he can sneak up that side. Get closer. I hope that the AT2 is not in the bush. If he sneaked up on the bush, then he would see the SU8 approaching. Keep behind the bush. That's it. Use it for cover. Watch out, there's a wreck in there. There's the wreck. Goes past it. Okay, he's not going to stick with the bush. He's going to go in. 16 seconds left. 15 seconds. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Oh, there's the enemy. Goes in and... Oh my god, he took him out. He aimed it and he fired and he took him out. He took three rounds from that 82, but he kept his cool and he went up there and he won that game. He blasted that 82 into the garage and <laughs> won the game for his team. What a cool dude to do that. My God. Oh, that was really, really exciting at the end. And it's an ace tanker for Sipe Legs in the SU-8. He managed also to get a bruiser medal for getting it five critical hits. He got 22. He got a gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. A Faden's medal for killing the last enemy tank with his last round in his magazine. A Radley Waters for getting at least eight kills. He did get eight exactly. A high caliber for getting the highest amount of damage in the battle. A Starks medal for surviving the battle getting two enemy kills, losing two-thirds of your hit points, and receiving at least two hits from the enemy during the battle. And lastly, a top gun for getting at least six kills. Just look at the medals that he took in on that battle alone. What a great battle. Uh, what a way to win it during the last few seconds of the game. The game was about to expire, but he took... he. You know, pulled up his man packs as Jingle said. He went in there and he took out that AT2 single handed and he won the game. Brilliant work, brilliant. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, highest amount of damage 2,335 hit points of damage overall. He managed to get eight kills, uh, you know, more than the enemy team. The highest score on the enemy team was the M18 Hellcat, which he took out, which were five kills. Um, he managed to get a base XP of 1,374. This, uh, that's nearly three times, or it is three times the damage from uh, the highest scorer of the enemy team. And uh, it's definitely uh, more than uh, three times, well, nearly, uh, definitely more than uh, four, uh, two times the damage of the SU-85 on his team. So let's have a look at detail report. Well, 26 rounds fired, all 26 rounds in his magazine. He got 10 direct hits, 10 penetrations, 5 splash damage. Damage of 2,335 hit points, of which 1,340 were at more than 300 meters. He received 3 hits, all from the AT-2, and they were all penetrations. Uh, but he spotted two enemy vehicles, he damaged nine of the enemy, he killed eight of the enemy, and he did stun assistance damage of 483 hit points off seven stuns. And he managed to get 17 cap points, or defense points, when he hit uh, enemy tanks as they were capping. On a standard account, he earned 33,384 credits. And after ammunition resupply and his uh, repair, he still had 10,503 credits. He received 1,374 base XP, but it was times five, so the total amount he took away was 6,870 experience points altogether. But that was a really great battle, especially at the end. And it just epitomizes what RT is all about, what modern RT, what, what RT noobs is all about in terms that we fight and we win. We don't suicide, we never surrender, we keep fighting until we've won. Or at least we take as many of the enemy with us as we can in the process to earn as much uh, win eight and as much uh, credits as we can. So well done, Cyplex. That was a, a really great battle. Really enjoyed it. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.